24 coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little black subscribe button at the bottom of your screen. Go ahead, click that black subscribe button. Really does help our audience grow. Really does help our channel grow. Really does help and mean more than you could possibly know. So go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button. Also, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook and the Betfred Sportsbook app. Bet 50 on any game, get 250 in free bets. Thank you again to Betfred. Thank you again to you. Now, here is the video that you came here for. Topic of the day, I'll tell you this. In what was a great day of college hoops, I don't think there was a bigger story than what happened in a lovely little town that the folks call West Lafayette, Indiana. Indiana at Purdue, mega game, mega rivalry between what I think we all think is the two best teams in the Big Ten. Well, Indiana walks into Mackey Arena, one of the toughest road environments in all of college basketball, and they walk out with a 79 271 win. Indiana upsets their cross state rivals on the road. And I just got one thing to say, baby. You already know where I'm going with this. That's right. How about my boy, Mike F. and Woodson? I just pulled up the Mike F. and Woodson T. For those of you watching on YouTube, you can get yours at AaronTorresOnline.com. Mike F. and Woodson, Indiana. What a win. And let me just say this. People are going to say, how did it happen? Why did it happen? What happened? What went right? What went wrong? I'm here to tell you one thing and one thing simply. Indiana had, on Saturday, the best player on the court. Indiana has the, 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 the most likely NBA player. Bottom line, one team had Jalen hood Shafino. You want to start taking out your notepad, writing down names to know? I will tell you this. Indiana's Jalen hood Shafino freshman guard. If you need to know one name, maybe out of the entire Big Ten for March, this is the name, and he is the reason why Indiana wins. So Indiana goes into this, this game. You know, like I said, a small underdog. They had beaten Purdue a few weeks ago in West Lafayette. This is the return game, and it was, you know, kind of touted as this matchup of big guys down low. Zach Eady, the All-American at Indiana. Trace Jackson Davis, the All-American at Indiana. But Trace Jackson Davis got in foul trouble early. If one, if Purdue has one thing, it's size down low. And Trace Jackson Davis was kind of taken out of this game, especially early on. Well, Indiana puts the ball in this kid, Jalen hood Shafino's hands. If you have not watched Indiana, this kid has evolved. This kid has gotten better throughout the year. He is a freshman. I believe he's from the Memphis area, if I'm not mistaken. But the bottom line is this is a kid who came in as a McDonald's All-American, highest-ranked high school player that came into the Big Ten this year. He has played his way up NBA draft boards, and on Saturday night, he looked like an NBA guard. 23 points, ball in his hands, beating guys off the dribble, getting into the lane, floaters, runners, three-pointers, passes to the, you know, the cutters and this and that. He was the best player on the floor early, 23 first-half points. He single-handedly, kept Indiana in the game. They trail by four at halftime. Then Trace Jackson Davis comes out in the second half. He is able to stay out of foul trouble. Beyond that, uh, all of the veterans that Indiana has, the Miller cops, the guys like that, they are able to get into a rhythm. And all of a sudden you look up and Indiana is in complete control of this game. The final score was 79 to 71. It really wasn't that close as overall Jalen hood Shafino finishes with 35 points. Indiana hits seven of 15 from three trace Jackson Davis in an off game still manages to have 10 points, eight rebounds, seven assists and a block and Indiana gets the victory in West Lafayette. And so what I would say about kind of the reaction and the big picture of this game. Now, look, I have been saying since December, I am not a believer in Purdue, but I don't believe that Saturday night was really about Purdue and this and that. And we'll certainly talk about Purdue in a minute, but to me, what Saturday was about, it was about Indiana, Indiana elevating as an entire program and Indiana. Now I believe, and I've said this for weeks, they're the team that's best built to win in the NCAA tournament. And I'll say, I'll say this and I truly believe it. This is the best Indiana team that I can remember in a long time that is built to actually make noise in March. 2013, they got a number one seed. They went to the Sweet 16. 2012, with Cody Zeller and Victor Oladipo, they get to the Sweet 16 and lose to Kentucky. 
those were the last times that Indiana really had a team to not only win in the regular season, but to win in March. This team is very much like that. Because when I look at Indiana, by the way, I, I've been saying this for about three, four weeks now. I said, I think Indiana is better built to win late in the season in March than Purdue is. But why is Indiana built that way? Well, one, think about through history, all of the all of the teams that have success in March. And we don't even have to talk about teams that strictly win a national championship. But what do you need? You need veterans that have been there before. What has been my criticism of Alabama outside of the chaos of the last week all year? Do they have dudes that have been there for their top six scorers or freshmen at Alabama? Indiana's got guys that have been there. Trace Jackson Davis has been at Indiana forever. Race Thompson has been at Indiana forever. They have veteran guys who have been through it all, been to the NCAA tournament, been on that biggest stage. You need shooting. They have that. You need, most importantly, in my opinion, I think two things. You need NBA talent, and you need guards that can make plays when all hell breaks loose. Because at the end of the day, I always say this. We could talk about you know coaching and seeding and region and this and that. If you look at the history of the NCAA tournament, the one thing more than anything that leads to success, do you got those dudes that can make plays? I mean, you even go back to Kansas last year. That wasn't thought of as any sort of historically great team, nothing like that. Kansas still had two guys that went in the first round of the NBA draft last year in Ochai Abaji and Christian Brown. And oh, by the way, Jalen Wilson is going to go in the first round of this upcoming NBA draft, in my opinion. Well, Indiana, they certainly got the guys that I believe are next level guys, specifically Jalen Hood Shafino. Listen, he's been up. He's been down. He's been good. He's not been good. But in March, when you need plays, you either got those guys that can just go make a play for you or you don't. Think about the, the narrative around John Calipari for the year, through all these years. He needs that guard that can go make plays. John Wall, um, Derek Rose, this year, Cason Wallace, De'Aaron Fox. Do you have the guy that can go make plays or do you not? And Indiana has that guy. Jalen Huchifino isn't perfect, but when you can go on the road, 35 points, 14 of 24 shooting from the field, seven rebounds, two assists, you're that dude. And if he can do it in Mackey Arena on a Saturday night with the world watching, Guess what? He can do that in the NCAA tournament as well. And so I'm really excited about this Indiana team. Really excited about my boy, Mike F. And Woodson. Get your tease, AaronTorresOnline.com. AaronTorresOnline.com. But why I'm excited about this team is because I think the ceiling, to, to quote Michael Jordan, remember Michael Jordan? He was trying to say, there is no ceiling on this team. It's one of my favorite quotes of all time. There is no ceiling on this team. And he said, the ceiling is the roof. Well, the ceiling is the roof for this Indiana team because, again, I always talk about what have I said on this show for the last month and anybody who loves college basketball said this is a wide open year. So take this Indiana team. They've already played Kansas. They played Kansas at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. They're a better team since then. That was the game that they had an injury to their guard, Xavier Johnson. They've played Arizona. They've played North Carolina. They've played in this Big Ten. They've played and won at Xavier. They're, they can play anyone, anywhere, any style, any of this, any of that. The interesting thing, I would actually say this, the most interesting thing about Indiana going forward and the one I, one concern I would have, they actually have an interesting decision to make, kind of similar to what Arkansas went through a few weeks ago with their star freshman, Nick Smith Jr. So Xavier Johnson was their starting point guard and Jalen hood Shafino was kind of playing off the ball. Xavier Johnson was averaging 10 points and five assists per game. And he got hurt in that Kansas game back on uh, uh, December 17th, right before Christmas, he gets hurt. And so why that's interesting is that he hurts his foot. He breaks his foot. He's about ready to come back. And Mike Woodson said the plan is to bring him back. Now, I've heard varying things about the fact that if he doesn't play, he can actually technically take a red shirt year and come back for another year. I don't know what the plan is, but. Mike Woodson said, or Mike Effen Woodson, depending on, on how you look at it, Mike Effen Woodson said that he plans on bringing him back when he is ready to come back. And so that's actually the most interesting thing with Indiana. They got a groove. Everybody knows their roles. Jalen hood Shafino is the guy with the ball in his hands. Trace Jackson Davis takes over games down low. What happens if Xavier Johnson comes back? That is the interesting thing, in my opinion. That is what I want to watch. But I'm telling you, you talk about a team, they're going to be on that 3-4 line. That can play with anybody. 
Give me the Indiana Hoosiers. By the way, one other interesting fact about Indiana. Believe it or not, and this is going to sound crazy, they have never won the Big Ten tournament. We put the Big Ten tournament in place in 1998. They have not won one since. I think they're going to be the favorites going into that tournament about 10 days from now. Really quickly from the Purdue perspective, listen, I want to take a moment, appreciate what Indiana did. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Indiana and what they did at Mackey on Saturday night. 